Welcome to the top video game podcast of the week from HorribleNight.com. I'm Justin Lacey, joined tonight by one Cole Monroe. How's it going, Cole? Good. Oh, I like my little name tag there. Yeah, look at that. It looks. I, I, we're bumping up the graphics one, Fancy. one thing at a time each week. <laughs> one of these days we might even have an animated intro and then incorporate that silly little theme song, so... It's not silly. It's Rhinoceros Beetle. They're awesome. Um, it's uh, Thursday night. Come at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night, September 12th, 2013. Uh, this is the interactive podcast from Horrible Night where we ask our questions of the week to your, to you all of you on our Facebook page each week. Looking for your best and worst of the week in gaming. But before we do that, Cole, what else has been going on? I uh, finally watched the new Star Trek movie, Into Darkness. Um... I got halfway through it enough to like that there was enough spoilers going on that I at least know what's what's happening. But what what was your overall take? Yeah. Um, without spoiling anything, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I I th- I thought that the Benedict Cumberbatch character was yeah. really well really really well played, um, and you know it's twists and turns and all that stuff. So I thought it was definitely um, a definitely entertaining movie. Um, I just, I don't know, I just like, I just like the, I'm not a huge, uh, Star Trek fan. Yeah. I like some Next Generation, um, but it's not, like, it's not in my blood like it is for some people. You kind of probably, and, you came at it more as, uh, from the director, like, you're into his stuff, I forget his yeah, name. Oh, yeah, that's J.J. Abrams. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say, is, um, I really like J.J. Abrams stuff, and, um, and I, and I like the fact that it's more action-oriented than, um. Just Star Trek has always been to me a, a more of a talky thing than mm-hmm. like a Star Wars has been more actiony, and I think J.J. Ab- Abrams brought more of an action spin to it that I that I really like. Cool. And again, Benedict Cumberbatch is fucking awesome. Like he's awesome as Sherlock. He's awesome in this role. Good shit. So you should check it out. I was. I mean, then, I think it just might have been the mood I was in. I did like. I was kind of bored by it. I didn't get get through. Like I didn't finish it in a sitting. I like I like moved on to do something else. I was kind of distracted. Had some other things I wanted to do, but it didn't it didn't grab me. But it wasn't bad. Right. So. I understand that. Yeah, I, I get that. And then also, uh, football season has started, as you <laughs> you know, because uh, oh, we probably man. got pretty drunk on Sunday. Well, um, you know, living in Las Vegas, we don't have a professional team, and sometimes the games that they show aren't necessarily the ones that I want to watch on the regular TV. Yeah. So I woke up early Sunday morning at like 6.30 for some ungodly reason and got into my head that I'm going to buy the Sunday NFL Sunday ticket <laughs> streaming package. Yeah. And so I did. <laughs> um, and watched the Colts. I watched the Colts game on my TV. Awesome. Just as it, as it was live. So it was really cool. Like, uh, I think it's definitely worth the price. Um, and what's really cool is like all the games are going on right now, or at the same time. You can just switch to them like like instantly. Yeah. Um, so like if the Colts game's in a commercial, I switched over to like the Bills Patriots game or whatever else is going on. So um, the one I've liked the most, like since I go to most of the Colts games, I don't I don't really not too up on the TV coverage stuff. But the red the red zone package is that in what you have or? Yeah. So see, I, I have the red zone package on my cable. Yeah. Um, but I also you also get it with the Sunday ticket, okay. So I can also just switch to the red zone and watch that while I'm on the stream. Now I like that because it just totally dictates. It just switches you to when the, when a, any of the other games are in scoring position, and uh, right. keeps you on your toes. So, but another thing that's cool is you can watch four games at once too, like through the oh, stream. Yeah. <laughs> I forget you what know, they call it. But they make your... a big deal their quad yeah. view or whatever. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's cool. quad it's zone. <laughs> The quad zone. What about you? What have you been up to? Oh, getting. I just kind of realizing that all the fall TV shows are starting to come back. Like, I watch all these after the fact, so I don't really. I kind of bounce from one show to a show, and I, I've. I think with all of the dramas that you know, there are the only the like twelve episode runs. I, I'm not as clo- closely tied to. You know the the fall and spring schedules as I used to be. It's just like oh now it's you know Dexter's ending so I'm going into Sons of Anarchy or it's just like there there's a there's a good 
good flow of shows now, but I don't really associate them with the time of the year. So it was just kind of weird. I was like, oh, shit, all of them are kind of coming back. And I hadn't really realized uh, uh, that Sons of Anarchy was one of the first ones in the fall. And that's that's my favorite show on TV right now. So uh, that just kicked back off this week. And Are you current on it now? Yeah, yeah. We've I, been... think, I think I'm a season or two behind. And I was like watching football on Sunday and saw the commercials like, no, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. It's, it's hard because like those types of types of shows where, um, a lot of them kind of, you know, pull their drama from people living and dying. Like all it, it won't, you don't have to read anything to get a spoiler. You just like see, Oh, that person's still alive and that can be a spoiler. So, um, yeah, it's really hard. Like that's one other benefit I think of cutting cable is I avoid commercials like that. It's more the internet that spoils that stuff for me. But uh, what I really wanted to say was between that and wrapping up Breaking Bad, like a lot of my shows are kind of they're they've that I'm really into are you know fourth, fifth, sixth season and right. starting to wind down. And I just I don't know. I I'm just kind of bummed out on endings of shows in general um, because. None of them, I don't know, I was just kind of negative about it. None of them really end well. And I just don't know where these shows are going and if they could possibly end well. And I just, I don't know. It, it, as excited <laughs> as I was for all these shows to come back, I'm just like, I don't really know where any of these are going. And overall, I just, I've been kind of fatigued by the whole thing, which is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> How many pizza rolls sorry. you got in your mouth right now? Middle. I got one <laughs> in my mouth. I got two left after this, so I'll stop eating. But sorry, guys. <laughs> right after work. Um, I get that same feeling sometimes where, and, I, and I've talked about this with video games before, is well, I'll get to a certain point and I don't want it to end, so I just stop. Yeah. And I just have that show or video game just hanging over me the whole time and just like, I can go back to it and, and then finish it, but like I don't want it to ever stop. You know? it, I hit What brought it up actually was when I finished Outlast last week, and... It was kind of that feeling that I don't know how horror games should, like, I don't know if there's a potential good way for most horror games to end and so i just kind of accepted it's it's ending which is whatever i I was disappointed in it um and i'm kind of annoyed by it but i was just like but i don't really know like none of these things end well and i'm just looking at all my favorite shows that are kind of coming to a close and remembering all the ones that have kind of tripped on their way out the door i'm just like i i don't i don't want to go through this i kind of want to just go back to win like watch two or three seasons and stop so (laughs) I'm I'm just complaining, but yeah. What can you do though? But I will say um, that uh, I did have one of the greatest video game endings that I've been a part of also recently. So going on a high note there. Um, speaking of, what was that? Um, I was hesitant to call this my game of the week, um, but it was Brothers. So I'm going to write my review on it okay. and talk a lot about it. All I will say about Brothers is everyone needs to play it. <laughs> So yeah, definitely. Is that, that's on Steam now, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's we'll on Steam. I think we'll it's on everything right now. Yeah, it's on everything. It's uh, Steam, PS3, and Xbox. So, uh, but definitely play that game. But and I don't want to downplay how much of an impact that game had on me. But my game of the week this week um, is Amnesia: The Dark Descent, just because I put the the game off for so damn long, and. Yeah. Um, I think I tried originally three different times to get into it, and it was just too, it was too terrifying and also just kind of obtuse, uh, when you start playing it, trying to figure out how to handle the puzzles in the game and, like, what you're going to be doing to make progress. It was, a uh, it's a lot of reading, there's, there's a good story to it, and, um, just being, a, being able to understand your inventory at the same time while being terrified and just, like, I would just get to the points where... I come to a dark hallway and I was like, I don't want to walk to this to the end of this hallway, so I'm gonna stop. But um, I've just been amped up for horror games this season and this Halloween season, and um, kind of resolved that I'm gonna play through a number of these games. And I won't lie, I've actually been kind of using the live stream as motivation to keep pushing through. Like uh, I don't know, it's kind of I, I get motivated by. Um, by like setting goals and other people holding me to them, so I kind of use the live stream that in that regard to be like, I need to keep seeing this, seeing this through, and it's been working well. But this game, like I played through Outlast, that's terrifying for about ninety minutes. Uh, Amnesia, so far like four, four hours in, 
just still every corner is freaking me out. I just got through the one of the darkest cellar basement scenarios I've ever been through, and uh, man, I was it was it, it was just it wore me out, and it was awesome. So everything you've heard about the game, it's it's pro- the best example of a great horror game that out there right now. Yeah, I just saw that it's in my library, and I have no idea why, uh, because I cannot play those games. <laughs> I get so freaking tense and sweaty and heart racing, and it's just not something that I enjoy. Um, so to see to hear you're like going through it, and and even like Ethan getting scared, and he loves that kind of stuff, is just like. Ugh. And I, Ethan was kind of broken a little bit by Cry of Fear, and he pushed through Outlast. But we both kind of agreed Outlast you could you saw through its tricks pretty quickly. Yeah. Um and but Amnesia I kind of know its tricks, but it's still it's it's just so thick. It is just it is it's a lot to get through. And it's it's awesome for that. Um but we've been kind of talking about too the difference between playing a horror game and watching a horror game and watching a horror movie. Would you watch someone play these games? Is that interesting to you? Yeah, I um, I watched your Outlast stream that I'm going to talk about later. But okay. I watched I've I've watched people play Amnesia before too. Um, because it's like it's something like I'm interested in in on a surface level, um, but I'm not interested in it to get engaged and engrossed yeah. by it. Uh, because I can, I don't know. It's like it's to- it's a totally different thing when you're playing. Uh, compared to when you're just watching it, because you're not. I might be saying go this way, go this way, but it, you know, if you don't and you something jumps out, it's not like, I don't know. I, I don't know really how to explain it. It's just, sure. it's just not that tense, I guess. Um, I've got a follow up question, but we'll save that for our highlight talk because I think it'll be okay. related to where you're going with that. Um, sure. Moving on to games of the week from chat. Uh, before we get to yours, um, Coop, again, I'm so proud of the guy. He he had to take about a four or five week break from his Dark Souls stream, and that game is tough to you know to pick back yeah, up. Didn't he go to Didn't he go to Germany or something? Yeah, yeah, he went to Germany. He was he got Ethan drunk at Gamescom. Um, really? <laughs> he was actually there for a work trip, so it was just kind of a big big coincidence. But um. Anyway, he picked up his Dark Souls stream again last week and uh, played it played it again this week, and it's been making a lot of progress and making some friends in chat that are helping him with strategies, and it's been really uh, interesting to see him uh, continue to make progress with the game because it's totally still not his style. So, uh, but I, every time I watch him play Dark Souls, I want to play Dark Souls. What's up? Do it. Is it Fweep? I'm gonna go with Fweep. I have no idea how to pronounce his name in chat, but greetings. <laughs> And um, Aaron, whoa, where'd this come from? Uh, Aaron's game of the week is Diablo 3 because all the talk around the console release got him playing it again. Did you ever pick that back up? You wrote like a I know, piece I, on it. Like, I, sh- I should probably get it now that I have a proper yeah. machine to play it on. Dude, I've got like a level 2. I've got, yeah, I've got a new guy. I've got a new barbarian. So if you want to fuck around, yeah, we can fuck around with that tonight, that. except you'd have to download the damn thing. So never mind. Yeah, is it pretty big? Pretty hefty? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. It's probably... Yeah. It'll take a little bit. Um, Verdian's Game of the Week is Minecraft. The Horrible Night Live... The Horrible Night Minecraft server is up and running, and um, some of our regular community members and our our Minecraft staff members are um, building all kinds of crazy shit that I don't understand. So look forward to more Minecraft stories, and look forward to Cole and I not contributing, because... I'm too intimidated and scared to get addicted, and um, you've also have some disinterest in Minecraft. But I think we uh, yeah, exactly. we both respect it. But uh, yeah, I've got yeah many- exactly. I, I respect for or I respect it for what it is. Um, I just I don't know if it's a thing where I'm afraid I'm going to get addicted to it or I'm just not interested in it at all. Um, like I like seeing people's creations, yeah. but I don't I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's not how you, how you want to spend your game time. Um, no, and then no, no. Emil, first time contributor here, uh, has been playing a lot of Battlefield Three as he's getting ready for Battlefield Four. So uh, I'm surprised I didn't actually nice. pick that up on since I've gotten my PC. 
check out some. Yeah, I I got it when it was on the uh, whatever um, the humble origin. Bundle. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I forgot it was in there. Those are some good games yeah. there. Ghost, yeah. how's it going? Chat is picking up a little bit, but Cole, yeah, tell me about your game of the week. My game of the week is. Ease, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm going with Wise one. still. <laughs> um, yeah, Wise. Wise. I'm pretty sure it's Ease. Um, but it's a classic, you know, Japanese RPG. Um, it's actually part of a bundle of East 1 and 2 um, called East Chronicles that's on Steam that came out on Valentine's Day this year. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first games I've bought. I bought, like, when I got back on Steam on the PC. And it just sat in my library for a while. Played it for like 20 minutes. Couldn't figure out what I needed to do. Um, so I got frustrated and then just moved on. Um, but not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, I um, was like, didn't really feel like playing anything. And saw that and was like, all right, let's do it. And jumped in, realized, you know, all I had to do was buy a weapon <laughs> <laughs> um, and then level up. Um, so I can be a you know powerful enough to just hit one hit kill the guys in like the entry in the um, in the beginning stage, and man that game is really fun. Um, it's so fast. Like I wrote a review. It's on the site. Posted today. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks like PlayStation era sprites. So there's mm-hmm. more detail. Um, oh okay. Yeah. But it's not like it's not like a. NES graphics or anything like that. It's, you know, it, it kind of looks more like a, I pronounce it Sukoden, but some people say Suikoden. Mm-hmm. It looks more like that. Um, that style. But anyway, so what's weird about it is you know, you hear Japanese RPG, classic Japanese RPG, you think of like turn, turn-based combat, like Final Fantasy style, or even Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest style. But for this, it's you just take your character, you run straight into the enemy, and it's called the bump bump system, where, like, bump attack. Yeah. And and so there's, like, if you hit them straight on, they have a chance to attack you. Um, if you hit them from the side or the back, you just attack them without them without your, your character taking any damage. So there's some, like, you know, they're walking around the map and, like, turning and stuff, so there's some kind of strategy you have to do, but um, once you just level up, you can just, like, run straight at them and just... <laughs> So it's kind of like a mosh so, pit. Yeah, kind of. And um, <laughs> you auto regen your health if you stand still, like on the world map, so you don't have to worry about potions or anything like that. Um, it's just, it's just. There's like hardly any inventory management going on. Um, I mean, there is some, but it's not, it's not that big a deal. Um, it's just, it's the perfect retro game for an impatient person <laughs> for, an, for an impatient player that used to like those games but doesn't have enough time for them exactly <laughs> it, six hours that was it seven hours finished the game now granted it's part like east 2 is like the second half of the game and that, mm-hmm. i think they were originally together or that was the design goal of the developers back in the day but then they split them up um so it tells like a whole story on the first and second game but it st- it stands alone by itself too. Like you can um, you can play it and be completely satisfied. And like I said, seven hours. So, I beat it in basically two sittings. Um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's just, just like the thing about the com- like. Does the combat remain interesting? Like, were you? What was your motivation? It feels like they took. It feels like the combat the combat would be just annoying after a while because you're not really into it. Like, there's no like big break for magic spells or is there any ranged attacks? Is it all just like No, no, it's, chest it's all bump. It's all <laughs> chest bumping. Um, the challenge of it though is like when you're running into a stronger enemy mm-hmm. um, they can damage you quite a bit so you kinda, you have to like run around them and like kind of catch the pattern of like when they're going to turn or when they're going to um, face you. Um, so there's a little bit of a challenge there um, but after a while like, it was just, I just wanted to hear, I just wanted to get through the game. Um, yeah. And just kind of see what the story was going to be. Because it's a minimal story, but, you know, that's what drives these games. And huh. the, the combat just, 
after a while, I just started skipping enemies because I was leveled up all the way, and so it wasn't it wasn't even like there wasn't a need to even attack or fight anything after yeah, a while. Like this is this is towards the end, and like I said, like you're, the game is moving so fast, that you're just running like right by them and just trying to get to the boss, and that's it. I don't know. It's I guess I can see why people might think it's kind of dull or uninteresting. I'm just trying to figure out what you're. For, I mean, you're obviously really into the game, but I was trying to figure out what your motivation is because you're. If you're saying the store is kind of minimalistic and maybe not like the biggest hooks, and then the combat to me is kind of, I don't know, a side note after a while. Like, <laughs> was yeah, it just almost I, like the nostalgia of playing it? But I think it. I think it was. I think it was part of the nostalgia, and I think it was just like I can finish this game. Like the drive to finish it wasn't so far out of reach. Um, mm-hmm. Like it is in some Final Fantasy games, where you're just like, I don't, I, I'm no, I don't want to spend fifty, sixty hours on this. So I can do it in two sittings. Yeah. It, it felt good to finish something finally, you know. Hmm. It's yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'll get into this, but my, my actually, my highlight of the week has been some of our recent uh, reviews, um, and I was really interested in knowing more about Yeast or Wise uh, after reading your review because it, like, it sounds like something I'd give a shot. Um, but I, I'm yeah, wondering what I think, the hook's I think you be. would. I think like Ethan would. Um, and again, it's not. It's not that. I, I don't know. There's just something about it that makes it fun. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm I think curious. The fact that you, yeah, I think the fact that like part of it, like I said, is finishing it, being like seeing the finish line in sight. Also, seeing like, you know, this is like the first game where I've maxed out the levels and maxed out the money and you can do that throughout the course of the game without it like you don't have to really grind if you don't want to. Um, you can level the you can level it up throughout through the game to where um, like there's like I said, there's minimal times of grinding and Yeah. I don't know. I d I don't I just it sounds like it, you just you found all the good parts. That makes sense. Yeah. With no hassle. So interesting. Yeah, exactly. There was no hassle. Once I figured out what the fuck I needed to do, no hassle. Huh. Yeah, I'm curious. I'll give it a shot because, and I'd also like to compare it to um, the Penny Arcade episode three and four because I haven't played those yet. And I know, you know, those are modeled after the classic JRPG era, but also kind of shorter games. I know they're like 10 to 15 hours. So uh, I'd be curious to see if um, those would hold your attention, but. I don't know the penny the penny arcade content might not be the best uh, gauge for that. Yeah, and see, and I started one of those one time, uh, and I think I was just in a hurry and I didn't have time to actually sit down and get into it. But there was so much text, I was just like, oh, yeah. I can't do this right now. For and the you, penny arcade did, stuff. Did you ever play his other games, the Cthulhu Saves the World, and I forget the other one, but Breath of Dragon Seven or something like that. Yeah, almost a Breath uh, of Fire, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, I played them very briefly. Oh, yeah. I I know, I know they were like on Xbox indie games. But nah, were, just trying to get a realm of compa- comparison, comparison yeah, for yeah. why this game hooked you, and uh, oh, always curious. So um, yeah, and I, and I and and I'm like, I want to. I'm going to play the second one, obviously, um, here pretty soon, cool. and um, see where that takes me because there's there's like eight or ten of them out there, you know. Cool. It and goes there's to coming out. There's one coming out for Vita this uh, next month, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I think or they were on. Remember. They were on. Like I was looking up the info, and it's on like every system. I know there was like a PlayStation yeah. Portable version of them, and um, it was. I think it was on the Wii, the Wii Shop for a while too. So, um, but uh, Ghost was saying in chat that he's re- he really wants to spend seventy plus hours on a game because it's that good. And I was kind of just anymore. Those RPGs aren't there. Like they, yeah, even the ones yeah. that are the ones that are that long, they almost seem artificially that 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 long and um i don't know i think it's it's i don't know square's lost his touch I, somebody else needs to kind of step in that realm for those big epic yeah. games but i don't even know if uh your and i's play styles anymore would get super hooked in that i know you played um xenoblade for a while but yeah i need to get back into that I really <laughs> like and then also the last story too like yeah. i don't know it's I don't want to play them on a Wii. I want to play them on something else, and I think that's what's I say stalling me. I want I want to try to do the dolphin thing, but yeah, I say I um, want I, I want to get hooked by something like that too. But um, it's got a big uphill battle for me because there's just a lot of a lot of good games that are like in that ten to twenty hour sweet spot for me that are pulling for my sure. attention. So sure. Um, 
Anyway, moving on to well, Horrible before, Night. Well, before we, before yep. we move on, yeah, I just want to talk about Spelunky real quick. Did you get Spelunky? I got Spelunky on the Vita. <laughs> and I was listening to the podcast with Aaron, Ethan, you, and Josh, basically right before we came on here. And I want to agree, like, basically everything that Josh said is exactly <laughs> how I feel about that game. Uh, I'm terrible at it. Um, so Josh and I have been emailing back and forth. We yeah. have our own Spelunky challenge um, <laughs> going on through the Vita. And it's to see if we can last longer than our poop session takes. That's our daily challenge. <laughs> I'm just joking. I just made that up. But, uh, um, yeah, so I'm terrible. It, it looks amazing. It's fun. I play it all the time. I just cannot get past. I don't think I've been to the jungle yet, honestly. <laughs> I keep getting hit by spears out of nowhere, and it's just like, fuck. I don't even know where it came from. Or I'll get killed by the, yep. the big-ass Indiana Jones ball or something. Or Just go in there uh, wanting to learn something new about the game every round. That's the way I stay not frustrated. It's like, oh, I didn't know yeah. I could do that. And I'll... Because, yeah, after a while. But, yeah, I've never... We're going to go into week five here. This is the fifth week of Daily Challenges. Um, I'm still going strong. so And still not even close to finishing the game. I, I posted a speed run the other day. There's so much of this game that I don't even know about. So, <laughs> um, HorribleNight.com highlights. Um, I was excited last week. Uh, Ethan and I have talked about this for a long time. And some, some with you, I believe, too, Cole. And then... Aaron, who also li- writes a lot of reviews for us, but we finally dropped the rating system for our reviews. It just, um, looking back at the reason and the, the impetus we have behind a lot of the writing on our site, um, it's not, don't, you're not coming here for the scores. You're coming here for um, that person's opinion of the game if you're interested in that game. And I just kind of really wanted to make sure that the, the focus was on that and it just... I don't know. We we've we had a lot of reviews in queue, like we're, there are several we're working on right now, and uh, we had a little bit of a, br- a break there since we had posted our last batch of rated reviews. And I was like, you know what? This next round, uh, we're dropping the, we're dropping the score. So um, it just it feels really good. It feels like it fits much more in the site, much much more sure. with our writing style. Um, so our first uh, the first review actually without a score went up last week. Um, uh, Ethan's Outlast review and then your view, review of Yeast went up this week. And uh, um, I was kind of glad because uh, Ethan had a lot of conflicted emotions about Outlast. There are things he loves about it and things he hates about it. And kind of freeing himself from that that score restriction, I think, will um, make for a lot more interesting reads out of our reviews. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I definitely feel less constrained by it. I know... Um, Sometimes, after reading the text of reviews, it's hard to try to figure out what kind of score. What, what did the score? Yeah. What did, what score does this say? <laughs> yeah, what does this mean or whatever? Like, I don't know. I had a hard time with that sometimes, and I know, like, on a couple of your reviews, um, you, you maybe you were thinking one thing, and the way it read was another way, and it's mm-hmm. just, I don't know. Getting rid of it is just. I think it's definitely a good move. Like you said, they're not coming here for the scores, and um, they want our opinions on the game. So, so we will um, we'll continue to do full reviews as well as our reflex reviews, uh, which are more of we've only played a few hours of the game and are reacting to it quickly. Um, and then the game curious videos will also still happen uh, when we play sure. the game for the very first time. So. Um, but I don't know. It felt good. Thought I'd draw a little bit of attention to it. But uh, what what had your attention on the site? So I mentioned it earlier when you were talking about amnesia that I watched your uh, Outlast stream <laughs> and uh, I was kind of pissed because I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And, <laughs> and during that time, you finished it. Oh really? So yeah. So I missed the end. That's okay. Because uh, I mean, and that's yeah. And, I, and like I saw you, I heard you talking about it afterwards, and you weren't like that enthused about it, or it didn't seem like it was that big a deal. Yeah, it was just. Um, Ethan but, called it unnecessary. The ending, and I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I still don't even know what happened, um, but I just, 
like I said, I like watching scary games, and I like seeing you like you're in Ethan's reaction while you're playing. Excuse me, while you're playing the game, I think that's like I get I get much more entertainment out of that than if I was to play it myself. Because like I said, I'd get so scared and sweaty. I'm always kind of yeah. kind of curious. Like I've never been the type to watch people play games. I've always um, had friends that come over to hang out while I'm playing game, and they'll watch the game. And then you know, as live streaming kind of took over, obviously that's kind of uh, lended itself to that. But um, um, yeah, it was really tough for me because I wanted to watch Ethan's Outlast stream, and because uh, he's especially entertaining during those. Um, because he get, really gets into him, but I also didn't want the game spoiled, and I knew I was going to play it, so I don't like. I only kind of halfway paid attention to it, um, but um, and I didn't know. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get through that game live. Like I just, I was like, so what happens when I don't want to <laughs> press forward? So, but I was kind of glad that I, I saw it through. It was fun, and um, it also led to um, probably my favorite highlight that we've put together. Um, which is yeah, yeah, exactly. the scariest moment in the entire game for me wasn't even in the game. It's, you know, playing that game and having a f- five-year-old girl come up behind you and, and say your name is much scarier <laughs> than anything that a game designer could make. Children are scary. They're terrifying. All right, moving on to our worst of the week in gaming. Cole, we'll just start us off. My worst... In the week in gaming is the fact that Sony uh, released the um, updated Vita and they got rid of the OLED screen and now it's an LCD screen. And I'm like, they're taking the best <laughs> thing, not the best thing, yeah, no, the best yeah, feature yeah, yeah, about yeah. the Vita yeah. is the fucking screen. It's gorgeous. And they're putting in just a ho hum LCD in it. Um, and I saw a couple of comparison pictures today, um, and it's just so much duller than the OLED. It's. I'm glad I got my Vita when I did. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> they're making a push I'm just a though. Disappointed. They're making yeah, a they push. They are. But it was it was kind Especially of with the, with the PS4 like coming out. A lot more people are gonna get yeah. into it. So. Um. They uh. It was interesting to just to see them try to justify and say why this the LCD screen is going to be better. And no, there's no, there's no. I mean, everybody I show that system to reacts to the screen, like that's just. I mean, my fiance thought it was cool. She's just like this. She took it a lot more seriously than any other gaming device I have. So, um, and I don't know. There's Sony should hold on to that because I mean. Maybe they'll, maybe they're expecting more sales and they can make some money, but um, nah, keep it a, keep it a quality device. I think the Vita's time is um, is still coming. So you keep looking like you're falling asleep, man. <laughs> but what no, if- I'm sorry, I'm I'm texting my phone. Okay. <laughs> I'm not falling asleep at all. <laughs> when you're looking down, it looks like your eyes are closed. It's freaking me out. Um, you always do this. <laughs> that's actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, your wife's in, in New York right now? Yeah, she's been there for like a week and a half for Fashion Week. So, I've been all by myself. And I even, you know what, I haven't even played that many games. I'm kind of this. <laughs> I haven't taken care of, I've been Animal, I've been Steve Irwin this week. Rest in peace. <laughs> a- animal Wrangler. That's a lot of work. Um, yeah. Worst of the week from the community here. Uh, Coop. <laughs> Coop's worst of the week is Steam family sharing and the people the people bitching about it <laughs> because um, I will I'll get we'll get to the good side of this in a bit but um, Valve unveiled their beta for uh, sharing your games with a group of friends or group of family and um, of course it has some caveats which I'll detail in, in in a little while but and people just were attacking those caveats even though. You're sharing games with other other people that don't own own those games. Like, let's focus on the positives here. So, um, Aaron, <laughs> the Aaron's worst of the week is there's an Oculus Rift ad going around. 
that is not safe by safe for work by any means. <laughs> uh, Ethan shared it with our crew. Um, Aaron, I'll, Aaron can post it in, in chat. I'm not linking to it in the notes. Uh, you can track it down. But it basically brought forth the um, the real reason everybody's excited for the Oculus Rift. So especially Josh Lee. Yes. So we'll leave it at that and just we'll we'll say. Um, if you ever heard us talk about 3D Sex Villa, it's, it's kind of related to that. So, um, <laughs> uh, Verdean's Worst of the Week is his last of, lack of excitement for the final release of Armor 3. Because I think some people are running into this problem too. When you play pre releases, alphas and betas for so long, you know, you've played through a lot of the game, and so the, the full release just kind of loses a little bit of its luster. So, um,. <laughs> So it feels like it, he kind of ruined it, but um, so I've been trying to I've been trying to, to be a little bit careful with some of those pre-releases. Like, really, I've tried to be like, I'll play it like that first that first hit, but I won't continue to play it. I will like I want to hold off until like a big major update and try to like at least draw it out a little bit more because I don't you don't want to have your first impression or your overall impression of a game ruined or changed or affected by the alpha version of it. And Emil's <laughs> uh, worst of the week is getting base raped in Battlefield 4. I'm not sure about that. Battlefield one. 4? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> or the anticipation of that. So, um, My worst of the, the week... Anticipation rape. Worst of the week was last week. It, it, it was a, a story from last week, but People are still talking about it, and Kojima's followed up on it a little bit this week. But um, it is a typo. Are you talking about Battlefield 3, Emil? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. And then um, we'll see if he explains. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I mean, it does make sense. Just like, I thought maybe like there was an announcement related to how bases would work in Battlefield 4. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, don't get owned. That's the lesson I take from that. Um, the so Hideo Kojima was out there talking about uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, which I'd actually forgotten about a little bit. So maybe this is the whole point of the story. But he had there's a couple different interpretations of the story, but essentially he had asked his artist to um, sexy up his uh, some of the designs of the characters and the one that leaked was a redesign of the sniper character quiet um and she's all of a sudden just basically running around in uh camo chaps and her bra and panties and uh, that's her new costume and they kind of sure. said it might lead to people cosplaying as them more and he wanted to encourage that and i don't know i might have had like Maybe I was just waiting for a story like this, but there just seems to be um, in the in the Japanese game development circles, like just oh, well, actually, one of the Halo designers actually came out and called him out and basically said um, that the industry is the industry is full of uh, game designers that are man babies and basically that everybody needs to grow up and. Kojima tried to defend this new look for Quiet or this updated look for Quiet as that he'll be able to explain it with the story and people will feel bad for calling it out. But it just, it just, I don't know. It it just really set me off that it, it felt like here's one of the like the faces of the game industry and I don't know. Combined with this and some of the stuff from Killer is is dead. I've just been down on some of the gratuitousness that is that is coming out in games that I want to hold up or revere more or, or promote more from the industry. And I just feel like some of these big name Japanese developers are really letting everybody down. They are, they're continuing. They're just kind of, I don't know, being revealed for the juveniles. They are is kind of my reaction. And it's, I don't know. It's I'm, I'm over it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess like, this has happened before, so mm -hmm. it doesn't even seem like that big a deal to me. And I don't know. Maybe I'm just jaded about the whole thing. I, I mean, I was. I was jaded. It was just like, but this awful following up after um, 
some redesigns they did to Lightning for Final Fantasy XIII for that yeah, new exactly. release. And they're at, when when they're at a press conference and actually joking about um, boob jiggling physics, I'm just like, you know, you you guys are really these Square Enix, Kojima, uh, Suda Fifty One. You're like the face of Japanese game development, and then. Maybe it was because, you know, I just got off of my high horse of um, kind of getting behind the, the Mighty Number no. 9 and um, what Kiji Inafune has been doing and just trying to, like, embrace Western development a little bit more and trying to get... Jap- no, I'm not saying... I love I love Japanese games. I love... Historically, I love them, and I love the diversity that they bring to the industry, but... There's just a lot more immaturity a- across the board there that um, that is is fine for diversity, but when like I said, these are the this these guys are the leaders of their of that community right. of developers, and it just seems like every every one of them lately has just kind of missed the mark there, and I, that I think someone needs to hold them to a bit of a, a higher standard, and they're not doing it themselves. So anyway, rub me the wrong way this week, I guess. <laughs> Um. All right, moving on to uh, positive things. Best of the week in gaming. We'll start with the community this time. Uh, Coop's best of the week is Steam Family Sharing. So let's talk about that. That almost made my list. Um. Uh, so yeah, Valve unveiled um the beta for their Steam Family Sharing, where you can basically form a group with up to ten of your friends or family, and um, those members. Um, can you can share your entire game library with them? Um, there's some caveats there. The biggest thing that stuck out was that basically they can play a game from your library, and then when you sign on to play a game, they get notified that they could they have a limited amount of time to um, play the game, or they can be they can purchase the game. Um, the the kind of weird thing is that um, only one person. Is that, is- so only one that... person can access the library at any time. It isn't. Okay. It's not that I want to play the same game. It's just kind of right, like that's what I was going to ask. It's almost like I kind of picture it like you have a shared console that only one person can play at a time. It just happens to be a little bit digital. So you, um, so you kind of tag in, tag out that way. And for everybody that like Coop was kind of talking about the negativity there. Valve just is the king of iteration in these types of policies and these, um, especially around the licensing of their games, that this is just the beginning for this, and it's also the only thing of its kind out there as far as the digital library sharing. So, um, so I'm just what ex- are people being negative about? Just they the, didn't have it yesterday, and right. now they have it. Yeah, that's Shut kind of, the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is... Yeah, I, that kind of shocked me too, but... I think it's a huge step forward because, um, you know, everything that Microsoft was trying to do with that original announcement of the Xbox One, all the digital right stuff was it was it was pretty interesting when it came to the uh, to the digital games, and um, you kind of knew that Valve and Steam were they were working on something, and this is just the the beginning there, so it's pretty exciting. Aaron's best of the week. Um, <laughs> was I posted a uh, video of a Spelunky speed run and they made it all the way through hell in like seven minutes and it's just it's kind of has to be witnessed to, be, to be, be believed if you've uh, played Spelunky and enjoy it so uh, Verdian, uh his best of the week was also the Steam family sharing and Emil um, just bought the Humble Bundle and uh, bought a Humble Bundle and was playing Brutal Legend and was blown away by the menu. Yeah, the intro to that game is some of the best video gaming and metal things in video game of all time. So enjoy enjoy those few hours, sir. <laughs> so it becomes an RTS. Yeah. Um, what's your best of the week, Cole? My best of the week is the Child of Light, the new Ubisoft JRPG that they announced. <laughs> and it looks... Really nice. Um, it's got this like 2D looking art style. I don't even know, like hand well, drawn kind of. They're using the art engine from Rayman. That's kind yes. of the, one of the big pushes. So, and that's the first right. game yeah. outside of Rayman that I've seen using that, and yeah. it it really makes it look 
yeah, like you said, kind of hand drawn uh, animation. But it's like but turn based battles, you know, and just like but it's a two D kind of side scroller puzzle RPG, and I don't know, and it's from like the people who made Far Cry Three, so it's just. I think it's really interesting that they're kind of going in a completely different direction. They've also um, been promoting it as uh, kind of a just a, a love letter to the genre in general. So I'm really curious to yeah. see what he, uh, Ubisoft yeah. can do with it. Um, but yeah, I definitely have my own eye on that. Um, my best of the week. Um, I kind of change this up a little bit. Um, but um, what stuck with me the most was uh, at. at Sony's press conference for TGS. They made a lot of Vita announcements, a lot of PlayStation related stuff, but they announced the Vita TV. Yeah. It's for Japan only. So it's a yeah. another little hundred dollar micro console that essentially is a Vita without a screen. And I say that because it's a Vita that hooks hooks up to your TV. And then it has all those all the streaming features that a Vita has, which means and I, they did confirm today that you can technically st- stream from your PS3 as well, but you play all all the, the Vita library games on there and you can stream from the PS4. So the scenario is you have your PlayStation 4 or your PlayStation 3 hooked up to your main com- your your main TV, but you can access the games and stream them to your uh, Vita TV in other rooms. If you're in another room, then you can play those games on that TV, uh, which is kind of awesome. So... Why would you buy a Nuya? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Better yet, why would you like buy, buy a game stick? They just announced their uh, yeah, yeah. release date today. So exactly like this. I mean, you can play Vita games. You can download PSP games. I'm pretty sure. Um, and then it'll have, the, it'll have all the other apps too. Storage, yeah, I don't think there's any onboard storage, but you have to. But you can buy the memory cards to yeah. download all the apps. Yeah. PSP games, PS1 games, PS Mini games. All that shit is available, and it's. I think it's a really smart move by yeah. Sony to to have that. Um, Especially because the rumor going into the show was they're going to announce some virtual reality stuff. So when they actually yeah. came out with something useful and affordable, um, they have not. I mean, they're really pushing back on the um, that they're now announcing a North American or a European release for it yet. So. Uh, but it, ha- I mean, they're going at Apple TV and Roku players and that sort of thing with this. But it actually has a games library that is interesting, and they're. All, I mean, that Vita library is blowing up. The PlayStation Plus library is blowing up, and uh, being able to access that on any room in your house with this hundred dollar device, I think, is really is really cool. Um, I also kind of like the fact that if you already have a Vita, you know, you can still play. You can play multiplayer games with it. So. Somebody else could bring over their Vita while you're playing on the TV and you're playing the same game while they're playing on their Vita and uh, lots of little kind of cool um, co-op possibilities there, multiplayer possibilities. So um, that's the most forward-thinking thing I've heard from Sony in quite a while. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like nobody predicted it or had anything yeah. even close to predicting it, which yeah. is weird this day and age too. Yeah, and then, God, man, my... My Wii U gamepad just looks dumber and dumber every day. I'm just... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll get out of here. The final question of the week. Uh, I think I kind of know where you stand on this. Um, but I think I did this the last time a Grand Theft Auto game came out. <laughs> I also did this when Red Dead came out. And that was kind of... I'm kind of infamous for that a little bit. Um, but I am not interested in Grand Theft Auto Five. But it's a huge release for the industry. And it comes out next week. So I feel like we should at least acknowledge it but i guess my question is what would it take to sell you on playing this game at this point mm. being saints row 4 <laughs> um you know actually i was i was a little intrigued um earlier this week or last week when andy and i think i think it was andy posted the map of yeah uh, of the you know of GTA Five, like the whole landmass that the game is gonna mm-hmm. be have in it, and so I thought that was kind of cool. But I was, 
it didn't take me long to get Grand Theft Auto 4 after it came out, just because it, it, it had been so long since I'd played a Grand Theft Auto game. I hadn't played... I played a little bit of Vice City, I played a little bit of San Andreas, but I mostly focused on just Grand Theft Auto 3. So I felt like it was still kind of fresh enough, and I just... That, it, that I just... <laughs> Oh, hello, dog. Um, <laughs> there's just no, I just have no interest in it. Yeah. Just after playing four, like I'm not interested in the, in the stories that they're telling. I think the outlandish shit that Saint Rose, Saints, Saints Row four did and three did far outweigh anything that Grand Theft Auto could be, and, and on any interesting level for me. So uh, I think if I do get it, it's not going to be. I'm not going to play it very long. Um, but who knows? Three months from now, I could be like, this game's awesome. I'm glad I got it. Yeah, I just... The draw to Rockstar Games is the story. Yeah. I'm not really too interested in the stories they've had to tell around Grand Theft Auto, honestly. The characters are kind of... They're always cool, but um, the stories themselves have never pulled me in. Red Dead was more of a period piece, I guess, that... Um, and everything in that world made... Like, went so well together. so fucking awesome. Um, I, that, I guess that's what I've been trying to nail down is that I was so disinterested in Red Dead when it came out um, after my disappointment in Grand Theft Auto 4. But yeah, there's just nothing... I kind of got intrigued when they announced the uh, you know the three playable characters and showed how you switch between the, the cameras of the different players to pull off heists. Um, and then I played Payday 2 and I was like, I'd rather play heists with my friends than control every little detail. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of a, a funny detractor from that but um i've been looking for something to latch on to but um i don't even th- i think regardless irregardless of saints row 4 which yeah um kind of blows it out of the water as far as um just navigating a a, a modern open world <laughs> um that that close to this game i just i'll be curious to see what other tricks this game has up its sleeve because i know we get a week out after release and i if I'm just reading about it every day, I usually can find some that some hook that'll pull me in. But I just I don't I don't see it with this. I just I don't know. It it will be a polished masterpiece in some regard, I'm sure. But I just um, I think I would be bored by it. So um, happy to be proven wrong again by Rockstar. But I was just curious if we could come up with something to be excited about there. So yeah yeah i got lost there for a second but um it's fine you didn't miss anything <laughs> yeah okay yeah i was just gonna you know kind of tack on and i hope you didn't say this but um if you did whatever um i just i just think that uh, what i was most interested in grand theft auto back in the day was a game to like screw around in um yeah the story was there if i wanted it but i really wanted to just drive cars blow up shit Run over hookers, you know, stuff I stuff I could do in real life, but I want to go to jail. You never played it seriously. It was always about the sandbox. Yeah, stuff. exactly. And then when Saints Row came along, yeah. and they built the whole game on that, it was just like, oh, okay, like I don't need Grand Theft Auto anymore. And I remember when Saints Row the Third was coming out, you're like, hey, uh, you could do something on this game, and I was like, I have no interest in that. Because I thought it was just another Grand Theft Auto, and then when I found out what it actually was, then you know my allegiance has switched big time. But yeah. I just yeah, not interested in the story. I'll be curious to see how it does. I mean, it they it almost seems at this point that it's like a, uh, you know, without a doubt, going to sell like ten million copies or something. But you know, oh, of can't, course, we'll see. Um, <laughs> and be blamed for the death of. Somebody else in the oh, future. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Gifford will shoot that down. We'll be fine. Um, yeah. That's it for Top Video Game Podcast of the Week. Thanks, everybody that contributed. Cole, thanks for jumping on the show. Hey, you're welcome. Dog, thanks for jumping on the show. Dog, thank you for participating. And uh, we will see you all again next week. Later on. See you guys. <laughs> Dog sneezes.